Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with it's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here for checking out the series. Of course, you know what to do. If you like what you see, what you hear, hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week. So it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I'm so excited today. Danielle McDonald is here to talk about the Tourist Season 2 out now. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so great to talk to you because, um, for one, like many, many, many people, I have just been sort of obsessed with uh, what's going on with the tourist and especially not knowing what to expect from a second season of it. Uh, I, I'm not, you know, I know we're here and I can throw you all the compliments, but I seriously even had more fun on this season than the first season. Yay. I'm glad. I feel, I feel like it's so different. I feel like People are either like, oh, yeah, I, I responded more to season one or season two. It's like they're just wildly different. <laughs> they are. And they're very, very different. I, I would love to hear about the process, because as as far as I understand, like you originally thought this was going to be a limited series, like it's not season one. It's just the tourist. And then and then what happens? Then it found a big audience in the UK, I guess. Um, it was. I, I think it was the most watched show of 2022 in the UK, I guess. Wow. Yeah, it was 2022. It came out a couple of years ago. So it was one of those things where all of a sudden it was like, oh, they want another season. We're like, but we didn't think that was even a possibility. And then it just kind of happened. I don't know. The writers one day were like, kind of wrote a pilot. I don't know. For season two, what do you guys think? And we were like, yeah, we would. So then it happened. So it's, it's interesting. Like, it must be interesting from your point of view, actually seeing it grow, because now, of course, you know, that happens and then the UK thing happens and then the American thing starts happening. Yeah. Like, you know, I think with any other campaign, you'd be lo long be done talking about this. And, and here we are. <laughs> I know it's so strange. I think it was one of those things where um, Netflix ended up acquiring it. And so they dropped season one in, oh, I don't know, February or something. I think it was February. And all of a sudden it found an American audience as well. And we were like, wow, that was unexpected, but very, very cool. Like very, very cool. And now season two has just dropped and like out here, it, it dropped a few months ago in the UK and Australia. So it was just another one of those things where we're like, wow, we're, we're still talking about the tourist, even though we, we, I mean, it's been three years since I left for the first one. So yeah kind of yeah it's still taking over your life at the moment uh a little bit I just finished filming another series in Australia actually and so I came back only uh a week ago now and I went straight kind of to New York and so it's been this yeah I, I guess I finished that job and I was like okay I'm back into the tourist world and then yeah so it has kind of just been like permeating my life for the last few years for sure yeah, not and a bad I, I, way. I wanna... definitely not in a bad way. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. I, I, I've got lots of specific questions about the tourists too. But with that in mind, though, it's like looking back even on your career over the past decade, and and you know, you're part of all these great Sundance films that it kind of happened, and then the tourist happens. And I know something like this. It's like, geez, when it happens, it happens, and you just grab onto it. But but I was curious about that. Like, are are you still finding? some creative freedom to get out there and still do some of those things like, like that. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think I make it a priority to, in a, in a weird way. Um, I, I, I think I started in indie film. Like I, I really did. I, I kind of got my start with indies. And so I will always love them. That's never going to change. I like kind of the crazy schedule of filming an indie movie and having not much of a budget. So I, I hope to be able to do them kind of forever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure they'll be scattered here and there as is everything with this industry. But yeah, I will always have a love for them. And I always want to kind of be able to keep doing that. But The Tourist is just, it's been another different kind of role for me. It's been another different kind of genre for me. And that's been an incredible thing. But I think choosing projects, it's always about getting to try different things and getting to try different genres and different forms like this is the first I mean it wasn't meant to be an ongoing like you said but this is technically the first time I've ever brought back a character in any form so that's really wild to me and that's a whole new experience in and of itself so that's pretty cool well I would love to hear so what was that experience because here obviously you have a lot of character growth you know from where 
you know, she she was a bit of a, a doormat at the beginning of the first season and, and mm-hmm. found her way out of that. Like, what was it like to revisit a character and build upon it? It, it was a totally different experience, honestly. I, I mean, I hadn't played this character for two years when we came back for season two. And on top of that, everything was different. Like we had different directors, we're in a different country, we had a different crew, we had a different cast. Um, Jamie and Greg were really the only familiar things and the writers, of course, but they're not on set with you every day. So everything else was really different. And it was kind of a wild experience because what Helen's going through, I was kind of also going through because I'm like, I'm in a totally different world doing the same character as well. So in a weird way, it kind of helps because you are out of your depth and out of your element and you're just trying to figure it out as you go. Um, But it was a really incredible experience, just a totally different one than season one, which is, I don't think that's how ongoing series usually are. I think you usually go back to like the same place and a lot of the same crew and so I know it's different in that regard. So I don't even know if I could say that I've <laughs> really done that, that experience, um, you know, of like an ongoing thing, but it, it was, it was really fun. It was just a totally different experience. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, so a lot of it's on the page, of course, Yeah. but with what you do with it, with what you bring to it, how you bring it alive. I mean, how do you leave the breadcrumbs to make sure you are tying back to that person that we got to know for that first time? I mean, that was, that was something I really, really considered because I came into season two and I was like, Helen's like a whole different person. Like she's immediately kind of losing it. She's um, fighting with Elliot, which she's, uh, she's like not trusting her gut instinct, which is kind of the one thing that she did heavily rely on in season one, even when she's been kidnapped, she's like, no, 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 I trust that you're a good guy. And then in season two, she's like, well, I know that you're a good guy, but I'm not trusting you all of a sudden because we have doubts and insecurities in relationships it happens it's it's life it's part of life none of us are perfect we can't always figure it out so her whole world is turned upside down and I was like how do I bring the same character when all the circumstances are just totally different and I don't know you you just try and figure it out you talk with the director um and you just I, I don't know a lot of it is also trusting yourself because the circumstances are so different and you know I originally established the character with uh, Chris Sweeney on season one and he wasn't on season two so it's also that weird thing where I was like I, I like I don't have him to like keep me in check either which is kind of a strange situation so you really do rely on yourself and then when I had scenes with Jamie because we don't really have many scenes together until episode like four um, when we started getting to work together we were like oh this dynamic that feels so much more familiar like we know this we know their dynamic even if there are problems we get it And that was really, really nice, actually, because I think that helped me feel way more grounded in the character as well, because it's just familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys separated the whole time. And then there was like, like the basement scenes. Yeah. (laughs) Did you have to go somewhere internally for those? (gasps) I mean, yeah, you kind of have to for, for any, for anything emotional, you know what I mean? There's always like a sudden element of that, but I think Connor's Connor McNeil who plays Ruri Slater he's a very very good actor and so (laughs) he would kind of just do these monologues like two-page monologues about his wife and he'd be just tears falling from his face and I'm like oh my god you're just in it because he's so good and that's really helpful (laughs) let me tell you it's really helpful and then on top of that like we got along so well he's a good friend of mine now And there's a moment where he kind of has to scare me. He yells at me when I'm on the floor. And I genuinely was terrified. I genuinely, I was like, I trust you 100%. And like, you are my friend. And we're going to laugh about this in about three minutes. But in this second, you are truly terrifying. Like, you're really, really good. And um, so that was, it was kind of great. Because then it just comes from the truth of the circumstance in a way, you know. But then there is also that underlying trust. So you know that you're not actually... In trouble which is always helpful and also i was actually handcuffed to the the oven so that also weirdly helps because you it's a physical struggle i'm like well i can't actually move that much right. like i actually can't grab this um like the key and stuff so you actually kind of get yourself in the elements of it but yeah you definitely do like there's it's dark what's going on it's really dark it's very heightened yeah and so. seeing him 
um switch on and off between the the nice guy the nice cop and it, it was but there's so much like i i like we knew i i knew uh, you know as a viewer and i think a lot of people you get it right away that this is going to be a darker season i mean that pig at the beginning really yeah. sets it up <laughs> and what's yeah. with elliot and bathrooms is it, it you think we can continue that like if, if you get to continue that i really i'd love for that to be a thing i guess I know. I did it make it in. I can't remember if it made it in. I don't know if it made it into the season. Oh, no, it didn't. They actually ended up cutting it. But there was a line about he asked to use the bathroom before he shaves off his beard. And he's like, you don't have like a key or anything for it, do you? Like they 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 brought back the line. But I think that that scene ended up getting cut because, you know, the episodes are too long. Certain things have to go. So that was one of them. Yeah. Or not long enough. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your old report, um, uh, you and Jamie, as you were kind of talking to, and it's interesting. And I, again, I don't know if, if it's anything different from any other, because I know a lot of what you do, it's all about your scene partner. You know, every, everything is either heightened or flattened because of your scene partner, but, but watching the chemistry you all have, but, but seeing how you've got to play against someone with at once no history and tons of history at the same time. Does that change how how you do your job? As an actor, oh. not as the character, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, not really for me. I, I think for him it's hard because in, in that sense. I think in season one, you know, he was saying it was a little bit easier because he has no knowledge. So it really is just in the moment, what am I thinking or feeling as the character that he's decided to be? Um, but I think in season two, it is hard because he's learning all this stuff about his past, but then he has his own separate past of like this past year and a half now. And, and so I think it was actually quite far, far more complex for him this season, but with Helen, I don't know, it comes back to the same thing. Like it's, it's what you're giving each other in the moment. And I think that that's it. That's at least how I approach it. I think a lot of actors have different methods. A lot of people have different ways that they approach things. For me, it's knowing the character really well, knowing the circumstances and doing all the prep work. But then on the day, I mean, I already know the information. So it's just what you're feeling in the moment, what you're giving each other. Having trust with the people on set, though, I think that's number one for me. Like I, I luckily, Jamie and I already had built in trust from season one. So it was very comforting just getting to be in a scene with him again because it was easy. Um, but honestly, even like the the camera guys, uh, instantly I was like hey what's up you're gonna be my face when I have to be like emotionally distraught let's become buddies and so you do like you you get to know sound and the grips and and the camera team because they are in your personal space at your most vulnerable moments the same way the actors are and so for me that's like something that I need to feel comfortable with instantly mm -hmm. so that that's a big part of it for me just feeling comfortable in the space so that then you can let the moment feel normal and natural and not be like there's a bunch of people staring at me that's a big one for me <laughs> yeah and I can imagine especially in your when you're you know in a country far away from what you're used to which by the way I, I mean McDonald do you have ties to Ireland Scottish. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, really? No. Nice. I should have known that. I, I don't. Yeah. I don't know those things. I don't know much about. <laughs> no, I, I think I think it's both countries. But yeah, tech, uh, for me, I think my my grandpa did like my family history before he passed away, and uh, go back to like the Scottish Isles. But I think my family came over on like the first fleet. So, yeah. yes, probably. Yeah. So it's not far anyway. You have a bunch of com convicts, uh, essentially. <laughs> um, Scottish convicts. So that's that's my family history on my dad's side. <laughs> Man, the history of Australia. I forget that part of it. I forget that yeah. part of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, every country, I think, has a little bit of a dark history. Australia does, too. It's, it's all, yeah, it's all yeah. relative. I've spent yeah. a lot of time lately. This You're my fourth Australian interview in, in a week and a half. I just Are you realized serious? That. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I had um, one of the guys from Five Seconds of Summer, Luke Hemmings. You and had Grace, Luke? Luke. That's so funny. Wow. He, he, he was just on here. And Grace Cummings. I talked to her. Oh, wow. Oh, no, the third one, that was New Zealand. I did the thing. I did the thing you're not supposed to. It had Neil Finn. Oh, the crowded house. you're a mix between New Zealand and Australia. Mm. How dare you? You'll get in trouble for that one. I know. I'll I won't get you in trouble, but some, some people. <laughs> 
really yeah <laughs> speaking of musicians you've spent uh what you did the music video for jelly roll right i did i did yeah how'd Honestly, that happen i don't even know how that happened it was it was really quite bizarre but i think my agent i don't know if we have a connection with agencies but my agent reached out and was like i just feel like this would be something you're interested in and i was like yeah i am i heard the song and i was like absolutely i want to do this just because I love music. I've always loved music videos. I'm really sad that music videos aren't what they used to be. Like I used to wake up on Sunday morning and watch Rage and like all the music videos, the countdown. I love that. Um, I still watch music videos, <laughs> but I heard the song and I was like, oh, this song is like crushing. It's beautiful. I want to be a part of it. And I heard their idea for it. And I instantly was like, please, please use me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was just really fun. I think he's an incredible artist with an incredible story and he's like re- reaching a lot of people which in a, in a really amazing way so I yeah was very fortunate to get to be a part of that had a lot of fun filmed in Nashville for a few days um yeah yeah fun. yeah I agree with you too I mean uh child of the 80s teen of the 90s and music videos was because I talked to my I have a 16 year old son and I talked to him about this about how you know there there is decades of songs where when I hear them, I can't separate what they look like. And I know that's, that becomes important, you know, to, for anyone who is watching them, like you get to be a part of that now, that, that sort of dimension. Oh, I know, which is so cool <laughs> to me. Like I, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in the nineties, like a, a child of the nineties, but like early noughties, I feel like that was a big, big time for music videos. And like, especially like pop punk. I like, I just went to the, like the Blink-182 concert in oh. Sydney a month ago. Had the time of my life. Was genuinely on set. I've never done this before, by the way. Like I go to work and I go to work, but I went to work that day and there was a chance I wasn't going to get off in time. And I made sure to let the director know early that day, there is a concert that I really, really, really want to go to tonight. And he ended up getting me off in time and I cheered. I was like, yes, I would not. I like, I missed a concert the week before. I wouldn't normally say something, but I actually saw Blink-182 when I was 12 Mm -hmm. in 2004. It was the first concert my parents let me go to without them. Like my older sister was there, by the way. They didn't just like, send their 12 year old off to a concert but they were waiting at the door to pick us up and they promised they they made me promise me and my friends like to not go in the mosh pit and we didn't we we sat in the seats we were good kids um but it was the first time they like trusted me to do that and it was so much fun and now it's 2024 it was exactly 20 years later it was in sydney the same as when i first saw them so i was like i have to get to this concert and it was incredible it was so good i went with my older sister again so i was like oh it was great. I love hearing <laughs> 20, that. I, yeah. I haven't caught the reunion shows, but uh, I, I've only heard great things about it. You know, it, yeah. it was so good. I genuinely wasn't sure how it was going to be because, you know, it's been 20 years and they didn't play together for a long time, but it was, right. it was actually like strangely emotional. And I feel like they've really been practicing. I was like, there's like some little runs in there. I was like, wow, look at you guys go. I was like a proud mom, which is ridiculous. Same old dick <laughs> jokes though. That's what they've got the same old dick. <laughs> That, that will always be there, but you can't expect anything else. <laughs> you know, it's like, that'll always be there. You just jogged my memory. I know why I was uh, waffling on the Neil Finn thing too, because it was a fourth one. I talked to the Veronicas recently and- uh, Oh, wow. That's cool. So... I grew up with them as well. Come on. When Forever came out, I was like, this is mm-hmm. so cool. I, I remember it all. Yeah. Like I said, I genuinely, like I used to buy the DVDs of music videos mm-hmm. growing up. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I, yeah. Gosh, I love a concert. I love a concert. I love a music video. I love music. Anytime I get to do anything that relates like film and music is so exciting to me. So it's yeah. very, very cool. And I'll quickly tie it back into the tourist season two because the pretenders, don't get me wrong, listen to your heart, yeah. Billy Joel's piano man, focus, oh. hocus. Like it's a pretty good soundtrack this season. It's amazing. They told us we were gonna be doing our dance to to piano man. I was like <laughs> no really what is it too and they're like no actually piano man I was like there's no way that you were able to get those rights to that song or I, there's no way they did and I was like this is too cool and Connor and I were practicing I was like I'm just still astounded that I get to be on camera while this is playing like legally this is wild <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it but that was actually really cool um yeah getting to dance to piano man on film I was like this is this is so cool to me I mean, yeah. very weird scene but very very cool yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> and the dance, of course, and Jamie getting his own dance thing at the end. It's uh, there's there's some nice moments, even in the darker, weirder moments. They're nice moments. That's <laughs> yeah, that that's the best thing about Jack and Harry Williams, the writers, the creators. They always bring it back to levity at the end. You know, they're like, here's something really dark, and just throw a joke in there, and you're like, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it feels very Irish, Australian, British humor, which I grew up with. So it was actually really refreshing, and I, I love that kind of dark humor. So it works for me. Yeah. Do you have an opinion on where you would like to see it go from here? God willing. <laughs> I mean, it was never meant to have a season two. You know, the fact that we had a season two was just like this really cool gift that I that we didn't expect. And it was really, really fun and a whole new experience. And I learned honestly so much on this one. Um, so I can't imagine there being a season three when I'm like, there wasn't even me meant to be a season two. But like on on the wild chance that, you know, like say 10 years down the road, they're like, should we just do a season three? You never know. Crazier sure. things have happened sure. genuinely. I guess it would depend where we're at in life. But yeah, I mean, I think it would definitely have to be a new country. I think it would be honestly better like kind of years down the road mm -hmm. when enough time has passed that you could actually create like a really kind of dynamic story of what's happened in between. It's a whole new history. But yeah, I don't know. I think it should be somewhere like really wild, like Iceland or somewhere just totally different visually. because. I feel like every country becomes a massive character in it. Australia is really like the outback, the red of the, the dirt. And then Ireland was just very green or gray, you know, because it rains a lot. And um, <laughs> and so I, I feel like it'd be really cool to see something entirely different. From and then you both get to be tourists, of course. And then we both get to be tourists. It'd be but great. I, I also love that you're, you know, if, if you want to, you're just picking places that you might want to go to vacation I know. <laughs> I know it was quite funny because when it came to season two they were tossing around like Canada and all this stuff and I was like what about Ireland because like that would be really cool to film in Ireland and Jamie was like what about Ireland because I'll be really close to my family won't have to move them halfway around the world again yeah. and also he's from Ireland so it was actually one of those really cool things where they're like yeah that would be cool and it's just very much its own landscape so then it ended up being there and I think we were all like yeah it's cool I love so, it uh, I, I so much enjoy this. I am hopeful. I'm hopeful for Iceland or wherever. I'm on board. Uh, <laughs> I've got my full trust in you all now. You've, you've, you know, I'm, I'm invested emotionally. I need this. <laughs> Good to know. I'll let them know. <laughs> Congrats on all the success that you've got from this, and I so look forward to seeing what you have next. And you know, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it too. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> and thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.